Was there ever a race on Earth more advanced or mysterious than the ancient Egyptians? Sure, you can make an argument that all of today's major nations and cultures have access to more technology and knowledge than the Egyptians did, but the Egyptians stand out because they were so far ahead of their time. In fact, there's much about the ancient Egyptians that we still don't understand today, as you're about to find out. If you suspected you might be expecting a baby, you'd take a pregnancy test. Believe it or not, that option was also available to the ancient Egyptians. It's just that their pregnancy tests looked and worked very differently from the ones we use today. Egyptian women who thought they were pregnant would urinate in a barley bag and then an emmer wheat bag. If the bag subsequently sprouted any seedlings, it was taken as confirmation of pregnancy. Scientists estimate that the accuracy rate of such a test would be around 70%, which is better than guessing or hoping. Furthermore, the use of two bags had a purpose. If seedlings sprouted from the barley bag, it was taken as a sign that the baby would be a boy. If it came from the emmer wheat bag, it was a girl. It's thought that the gender test would produce far less accurate results, although women in ancient Egypt had higher concentrations of estrogen in their bodies than the women of today, so it's hard to know for sure. The most amazing takeaway from this is that ancient Egyptians understood that testing urine was the key to confirming pregnancy all that time ago. We're all familiar with the scene of the nativity, with a star in the east and a newborn baby cradled by its parents with animals in the background. Here's a nativity scene from Egypt, found in the ceiling of a cave in the Sahara Desert. There's a catch, though. According to Christian beliefs, the nativity happened a little over 2,000 years ago. This Egyptian nativity scene is closer to 5,000 years old. The painting was made using red ochre, the most common shade in the prehistoric world, and its resemblance to the Christian nativity has been written off as a coincidence. It's entirely possible that it was painted by a family as a way of celebrating the arrival of a new child, but questions remain about some of the other things included in the painting. Why, for example, is there a star in the east? Why is the baby drawn slightly above its parents as if it were raised towards the sky? All ancient religions borrowed ideas from each other in their early years, but did early Christians see scenes like these painted on cave walls and then incorporate them into their ideology? We're all familiar with the pyramids of Egypt. The Great Pyramid of Giza is world famous and is the only one of the seven wonders of the ancient world that's still standing today. As impressive as Egypt's pyramids are, they're not as beautiful as they once were they all used to have smooth coated sides, and they were all once capped with pyramidians like this one. Taken from the pyramid of Amenemhat III, this is the only granite pyramid capstone that's still in existence, and you can find it at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. It's battered and broken, but it's apparent from the small square protrusion on the base that it was designed to fit into the recesses at the top of the pyramid stonework. Perhaps this one has survived because the monument it was built to sit atop collapsed during the building process. The clay, stone, and adobe construction materials used in the creation of the pyramid couldn't bear the weight that was asked of them, and as it was only 30 feet above sea level, the ground was wet. The project was doomed from the start. Mysteriously, some of the hieroglyphics on the side have been scratched out on purpose, making it impossible for us to read or understand them. We've already said that there are many ancient mysteries to be found in Egypt, but perhaps none quite so bizarre as the unfinished obelisk of Aswan. This is the largest of all the known ancient Egyptian obelisks, and would have been even bigger had its makers ever gotten to the task of finishing what they started. The quarry that the obelisk rests in is thought to have been the first source of granite the ancient Egyptians ever discovered, and the obelisk itself is at least 4,000 years old. It's impossible to know why the monument was left in an unfinished state, but it might have something to do with the fact that the granite they were working with had begun to crack. Deciding they couldn't repair the damage, they left it, still connected to its parent rock. Several of the workers left maker's marks and small carvings on its surface before they abandoned it. Sadly, 
We'll never know where it would have been erected had it been finished, but it would have stood almost 150 feet tall and would likely have been considered one of the wonders of the ancient world. We know that humans weren't the only living beings to be mummified after death in ancient Egypt. Cats sometimes received the same honor, and so did baboons. The existence of mummified baboons is a fact that most people are unaware of, and yet they might be key to our understanding of the lost and forgotten land of Punt. We know that Punt definitely existed, but we're not sure where it was. We know it was close to the Red Sea, but historians can't agree whether it was in Africa or Arabia. It's through Punt's trading relationship with Egypt, which lasted for over 1,000 years, that we discover the most information. The Egyptians bought baboons from Punt, then mummified them after they died. And studying these mummified remains is recently proven that they came from a part of the world that now covers Ethiopia, Somalia, and Yemen finally providing us with some clarity on where Punt was and the amount of land it covered. At the same time, it also shows that the Egyptian seafaring capabilities were even greater than we tend to give them credit for. The long-range maritime connection between the kingdoms might even have been the beginning of the famous spice route and the origin of globalization. It's a commonly held theory that there was once a fourth pyramid on the Giza Plateau. No archaeological evidence of this supposed fourth pyramid could be found for a very long time, but perhaps this mysterious staircase is the first sign of it. The staircase plunges down into the floor of the desert and might once have been in the missing pyramid's basement. In an impressive feat of engineering, the staircase leads straight down through several feet of limestone and leads to a hidden underworld below the plateau that was unknown until 2018. Access to the plateau is strictly limited because the staircase is on land owned by the military. But a few lucky archaeologists have managed to gain supervised entry. Amazingly, the lowest point is a full 125 feet beneath the ground and is full of water. The underground area is full of carefully carved niches in which black basalt and granite sarcophagi are installed. The sarcophagi are open so someone has obviously raided these tombs in the distant past. The ancient writer Herodotus once spoke of Egyptian priests creating underground chambers during the building of Memphis, and it appears that the practice occurred in Giza too. It's like there's a whole secret city beneath the plateau. Why would anyone create a door that's impossible to walk through? It's a fundamentally pointless thing to do, and yet the ancient Egyptians created lots of them. They're often carved into solid stone and are common architectural features in Egyptian tombs. It's possible that the Egyptians got the idea from elsewhere, as they're also sometimes found in pre neurogic Sardinian tombs. Many centuries later, they would also begin to appear in Etruscan tombs and eventually Roman tombs too. Clearly, they were extremely important from a symbolic point of view. Historians think that to the Egyptians, the false doors represented a physical threshold between the world of the living and the world of the dead. Only deities or the spirit of the person buried within the tomb could pass through the door. False doors would often be the focus of offering chapels within tombs, a place where the loved ones of the deceased could leave tributes and goods for them to collect and use on their travels between the worlds. In Egypt, the false doors are almost always found in the west wall of funerary chambers because the Egyptians believed the land of the dead lay to the west. The only thing we know for certain about Kaya, the mysterious woman of Amarna, is that she was called Kaya and she was married to Akhenaten. Everything beyond that is speculation. What was to be her coffin was adapted for the burial of a pharaoh so we don't know where her body is. Her reliefs were recut for Princess Mary Atatan after she died, suggesting that those who came after her wanted to disgrace her. We don't even know for sure when she died. It's possible that she's one of two bodies that were found in tomb KV-35 in 1907. The archaeologists of the time called them the Younger Lady and the Elder Lady but we now think it's likely that the younger lady was Nefertiti. Some Egyptologists think the elder lady might be Kaya, but there's no way of proving it. 
All we have are unreliable sources, confusing inscriptions, and broken monuments. Some of those sources indicate that within the royal court, she held a special title of the beloved wife, indicating that she was preferred to all of the pharaoh's other wives. If that's the case, how did she come to be practically erased from history? And why? You'd need a degree in Egyptian history before you could even begin to contemplate the full extent of the mysteries of the Temple of Kom Ombo. Even that probably wouldn't be enough. However, the mummified remains of several hundred crocodiles were recently found underneath the temple, thus finally explaining some of the markings on the walls. Unusually for Ptolemaic period Egypt, the temple is divided into two. We have two halls, two courts, two sanctuaries, and even two entrances. Half of the temple is devoted to worshiping Sobek, the other half to Horus. The Sobek half of the temple is covered in crocodile paintings, but nobody could ever work out why. The paintings earned the temple the nickname House of the Crocodiles, but until the crocodile remains were found, most historians just thought of the artwork as quirky and unexplained. What remains unexplained are the engravings of medical and surgical implements on the temple walls, which are said to be the oldest in the world. Were there two separate priesthoods here? Was one devoted to medicine and the other to crocodiles? If so, what did they have in common? A few years ago, staff at a museum in Haifa, Israel, decided to scan what they thought was a mummified Egyptian child. The cadaver had been in the museum's collection for many years, but had never been investigated with modern technology. When they subjected the 3,000-year-old mummy to a CT scan, they were astonished by what they saw inside it. Although the wrappings of the mummy might look human, the contents of it are very much not. Instead, the whole thing is made of plant matter. It's a bizarre discovery, but Egyptologists at the museum believe that they might be able to explain it. They think that the mummy might be a representation of Osiris, the Egyptian god of the dead and lord of the underworld. Mummies like this one are known as grain mummies, although this particular example is made of corn. Unfortunately, the museum isn't sure where the mummy came from. They think it was found inside a pharaoh's tomb, but they don't have sufficient provenance to say for sure. While most people would be disappointed to find out that their rare Egyptian mummy isn't real, the staff at the museum were excited and now plan to carry out further research. Human beings have a habit of looking at things and seeing familiar patterns in them, even if the patterns aren't really there. That's probably why so many people think this ancient Egyptian statue is a representation of the late singer Michael Jackson. Although even we have to admit there's a passing resemblance, the statue is 3,000 years old and can currently be found on display at the Chicago Field Museum in the United States. Prior to that, it was bought in Cairo by a Chicago-based timber baron in 1894. He donated it to the museum five years later. Visitors to the museum are so obsessed with the idea that it looks like Michael Jackson that they developed a habit of touching or even kissing it. That's why it's now behind a protective screen. Obviously, it's not really an effigy of the controversial entertainer, but historians aren't sure who it's actually supposed to be other than the fact that it's a representation of a woman. As for the missing nose, depending on who you believe, the noses of Egyptian statues were cut off long ago, either by early Christians who wanted to discourage idolatry or by Greeks who wanted to hide the fact that the statues had black features. Whenever the technology used by archaeologists advances, someone always returns to the pyramids to see if that technology leads to any breakthroughs. In 2015, an international team of scientists and architects conducted a joint survey of the pyramids of Giza and identified thermal anomalies deep inside the structures. Higher than expected temperatures were recorded in three adjacent stones in an impossible to reach area at the very bottom of the Great Pyramid. Although empty spaces, different building materials, and internal air currents have all been suggested as possible causes for the anomalies, nobody's able to say for sure. 
Further anomalies were detected in the Great Pyramid's upper half. The discovery came when the research team used infrared thermology to scan the pyramids as they heated up during sunrise and then again when the sun went down and the limestone cooled. It's a virtual certainty that there are rooms and chambers inside the pyramids that we haven't yet been able to reach. But why would those chambers be warmer than the structure around them? Unfortunately, it might be several years before we find out. The government of Egypt is very reluctant to let anybody start cutting into the Great Pyramid and doing even more damage than's already been done. And rightly so. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.